Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about a neat little tool you can use to solve symmetric zero-sum games. You'll remember that the motivation for this is that we were looking at rock, paper, scissors previously, a game that looked like this. We sort of guessed that the equilibrium was going to be for each player to randomize equally among all three of their strategies, but while that's great for this particular game, you can change the payoffs just a little bit to something like that, or make it even worse and do something like that, and you can no longer just easily guess what the Nash equilibrium is to either of these two slightly different games. So how do we go about solving this game if we don't have the ability to just guess things? Well, you need this tool. This tool is going to save you just a ton of time. It's going to keep you from having to go through every single possible combination of strategies, and you'll just, just generally be a happier, saner person if you know this trick. First order of business, though, is to discuss what a symmetric zero-sum game is. We've talked about what zero-sum is in the past, so let's quickly review that. A zero-sum game is a game in which if you add up the payoffs in every outcome, that they sum to zero. So in this outcome, this rock-rock outcome, zero plus zero is equal to zero. In the paper-paper, or sorry, the paper-rock outcome, this six plus this negative six is equal to zero. In scissors-rock, negative two plus two is equal to zero, and so forth. All of these things sum to zero. A symmetric game is a game that is, as it sounds, symmetric among its strategies and its payoffs. So in this game, the players have the same strategies, and they also have the same payoffs given what their strategies are. So if we switched each player's strategies, we would be switching their payoffs. So if both players play rock, if we, well, they have the same payoff there. In a more complicated case, though, if player one plays paper and player two plays rock, then player one earns six and player two earns negative six. But if we switch the strategy so that player one plays rock and player two plays paper, now player one earns negative six and player two earns six. So this six is the same as this six and this negative six is the same as negative six and so forth. You can see a little bit simpler of an example if we just look at a two by two game. So in this game, which as the title suggests is just a symmetric zero sum game, the players have the same strategies, alpha and beta, and they have the same symmetric payoffs given what they're doing. So if they both play alpha, they both play, they both get zero. If they both play beta, they both get zero. And then if one player plays alpha and the other player plays beta, then the player playing alpha, in this case up here, player two gets, or player one gets two, and player two gets negative two. So the alpha player gets two, the beta player gets negative two. All right, so now we have an understanding what a symmetric zero sum game is. What's this really awesome tool I'm about to teach you? Well, it's that in a symmetric zero sum game, each player's expected utility in a Nash equilibrium must be equal to zero. So let's think about why that's the case. It's true, I'm not gonna give you a complete proof about why it's true, I'm just gonna give you the intuition so you believe me and so you can go on using it in your nice, happy way when you're trying to solve your homework sets. So imagine that it's not the case. Then it follows that if both players aren't earning zero, then there's one player who's earning a positive amount and there's another player that's earning a negative amount. So we'll call the winner the player that's earning the positive number and the loser the player that's earning the negative number. And there has to be one player that's earning a positive number and the other player earning a negative number because all of these payoffs have to sum to zero. So we know that if both players' payoffs aren't zero, then one guy is getting some positive amount and the other guy is getting some negative amount. But if it's the case that the winner is getting a positive amount and the loser is getting a negative amount, then the loser could always just copy the winner's strategy and earn zero, which is going to be a profitable deviation for the loser since the loser was going to earn a negative amount before. If we look at the alpha beta game, we'll see how this works. So can this be an Ash equilibrium? Well, given the rule that I said that the payoffs must be zero for both players in equilibrium, this can't be a pure strategy in Ash equilibrium, where player one plays beta and player two plays alpha. And the reason for that is here, player one is the loser. Uh, he's playing beta and he's earning negative two. Player two is the winner. She's earning two by playing alpha. There's no reason why player one can't just copy the winner's strategy. So the winner's strategy here is to play alpha. And in fact, if player one copies player two strategy, he switches from earning negative two to zero, which is, as I said, a positive or a, a profitable deviation for player one. And the same thing is gonna be true over here 
where now player one is winning with two, player two is losing with negative two, but player two can just switch from her losing strategy, which is beta, to copying player one strategy, which is alpha, and switch over here, which is a profitable deviation for her. Now, it's not the case that just any outcome that produces a payoff of zero for both players is a Nash equilibrium. So this, this outcome down here where both players play beta, both players earn zero, but that's not a Nash equilibrium. So the rule I gave you is not a sufficient condition, it's just a necessary condition. We can see that this isn't going to be a Nash equilibrium very easily because player one could, instead of playing beta, play alpha instead and earn two, and this two is greater than the zero, so this isn't a Nash equilibrium. This, however, of course, is the Nash equilibrium. Player one doesn't want to switch to beta because he'll drop from zero to negative two, and player two doesn't want to switch from alpha to beta because this will drop her zero, her red zero here, to this red negative two here. Okay, so I think that gives you just the general intuition about it. Why does this matter? Well, it matters for a very important reason. It's going to save us an absolute ton of time. As we talked about when we were looking at why it's really difficult to solve for the uniqueness of the rock-paper-scissors equilibrium, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where the players were randomizing with probability one-third in all of their strategies, we talked about the reason why it was so difficult is we'd have to check for every single other possible set of strategies that could be a Nash equilibrium where player one plays rock as a pure strategy and player three mixes just, or sorry, player two mixes with uh, probability one half on rock and probability one half on scissors, or player one mixes randomly between rock and paper and player two mixes among all three of her strategies and so forth. There's just a ton of strategies that we'd have to check and, and calculate expected utilities and then look back to make sure that those sets of strategies are in Nash equilibrium because no player has a profitable deviation. But because we know that each player's expected utility in Nash equilibrium must be equal to zero in symmetric zero sum games, we don't actually have to fully solve for the expected utilities for these, these outcomes. We just need to know whether they are positive or they're negative. And if we show that a player has a positive expected utility or a negative expected utility, then we know that that outcome is not going to be, or that set of strategies is not going to be a Nash equilibrium. And in fact, in the next video, we'll put that to work when we look at rock, paper, scissors and actually show that the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is the unique equilibrium utilizing this rule about symmetric zero-sum games. And I will see you in the next video for that.